In 2019, Boston Dynamics revealed Spot, a robot dog that could walk on four legs and open doors. The trailer imagined a world where we'd be seeing spots in offices, construction sites, and the great outdoors. And here he is. Spot. 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 So Spot hasn't invaded our daily lives like we were promised. Am I gonna say that's because animal-based or human-based robots kind of suck? But don't take my word for it. Take it from the guy responsible for Spot, the founder of Boston Dynamics, Mark Raber. You know, th there's a, an aspect to humanoid robots that's about uh, all about the cosmetics, where there isn't really other functionality, and that kind of is off-putting for me. What he's saying is that a humanoid robot isn't always the best tool for the job. If you want a robot to vacuum your carpet, you don't need to build the Terminator. You just need a little round thing on wheels. So in this video, we're going to explore why the world's most famous robot company built the world's most advanced robot dog that no one wants. The story begins in the 1980s at MIT's Leg Lab, where a young Mark was making walking robots. But as an academic exercise, he took what he learned and set up a company selling not a robot, but computer software, where a soldier walks a virtual world. He called it Daigai, and the US Department of Defense used it to simulate battle scenarios. Daigai was the first product sold by Boston Dynamics. After a few years, the military spotted that Boston Dynamics had potential, and so they made Mark an offer that he couldn't refuse. They would feed his company millions of dollars, while he would start building robots again. Chiefly, they want him to build a product for moving around the battlefield. This kept Mark's company going for a decade, exploring all sorts of ways robots could move around. But in 2009, they posted a video revealing their most important project, and it went huge. This was Big Dog, a robot that could walk on four legs, take a beating, and literally get back on its feet. It was the culmination of 20 years of robotic research, a synthetic companion for the soldier behind enemy lines. And the world was awestruck. But not the Department of Defense. You see, reconnaissance is hard when your gasoline-powered bag carrier actually sounds like this. So the military turned it down. But despite the setback, there were people who thought Boston Dynamics had potential. Enter Alphabet. Google's parent company. Alphabet spent half a billion dollars buying Boston Dynamics and planned to keep feeding it development money until it can make a robot for the home or the office, something that people would actually want to buy. This was a great time for the company, but it didn't last long. Because shortly after Boston Dynamics was purchased, a lot of the top brass at Alphabet were moved on. And the people that took over were less chill about just feeding it money until it one day made a profit. So the relationship was already sour, but then it turned truly toxic. Because there's something we haven't told you yet, which was at the time of the purchase, Boston Dynamics already had a new contract with the military. This was Atlas, a hydraulic powered humanoid robot designed to be a kind of chassis that the military could add things to. And if you're thinking guns, well, there's no confirmation of that actually. This video though went super viral and the world was again simultaneously terrified and inspired, and Boston Dynamics profile went through the roof. The world was again wowed. Well, not the whole world. A leaked memo from an Alphabet staffer said they were starting to see some negative threads about it being terrifying, ready to take humans' jobs, and they wanted to distance Alphabet from the video. And so, with Mark's company denting Alphabet's wallets and their reputation, Boston Dynamics was put up for sale. So Mark's company had been kicked out of its parents' house, had no product, had no military contracts, had no clear future. This could have been the end of the road, but then another company spied potential. SoftBank is a Japanese company that invests in startups, including the retail giant Alibaba and British chip manufacturer Arm. SoftBank bought BD and set them to work designing the company's first consumer robot. So the team took everything they'd learned over 30 years of research and came up with Spot. This new robot takes the technology from the enormous gas-powered big dog and puts it into a smaller, electric, consumer-friendly package. But despite all the technical achievement, Spot is still a pretty hard sell. 
Hello, sir. I'd like to say you my invention. It's top of the range, the latest technology. Yours for just $70,000 with optional accessories. Oh, and um, could you tell me what it actually does? This is their big problem. Boston Dynamics doesn't know what Spot is actually for. Their early adopter program basically asked customers to tell them what Spot should do. The new CEO, Robert Plater, said that the most frequent answer is Spot could patrol factories to check machines are working properly. Which isn't exactly the world-changing utility we were all expecting. Boston Dynamics isn't a publicly traded company, so we don't have figures on how many Spots have actually been sold. All we do know is in 2023, they claim to have 1,100 out in the wild. Since then, Spot has been deployed in selected breweries, airports and power plants, patrolling the corridors and checking valves. It's also been used in Fukushima to explore high radiation areas, which is admittedly really, really cool, though quite niche. And it seems SoftBank wasn't convinced it was going to be a success either, because before Spot could even stretch its legs, they sold 80% of the company to Hyundai. Now, Hyundai could be a really great home for Boston Dynamics. They have a lot of factories and are looking for ways to increase automation. Spot is supposed to play a part in that, but now there are two other robots. First is Stretch. It's an arm on wheels designed to move boxes around factories. The other robot is a new Atlas. This one uses electric motors instead of hydraulics, and it's already being put to work. In 2025, Hyundai plans to deploy Atlas in its factories, doing the arduous, hazardous job of putting engine covers into sleeves. What Boston Dynamics has taught us is that making a walking robot isn't the hard bit. Not anymore. Mark's been making them for 30 years. No, the hard bit is selling them. Why? Because if you have a dirty floor, you'd get a Roomba. If you have a valve that needs monitoring, you'd get a camera. And if you have engine covers that need sorting, then you'd get an intern. Boston Dynamics had a tough year in 2024. They laid off 5% of their staff, with the CEO saying that they were burning through cash as they tried to find a sustainable model. Spot and Atlas are kind of proof of Mark's point that human or animal-shaped robots have a usefulness problem. And the potential of Stretch only reinforces that point as the least animal-like of the bunch. But in the end, maybe the missing piece isn't in improving how robots move, but how they think. In 2019, Mark Raybert stepped back from Boston Dynamics and founded the Robotics and AI Institute, where the focus isn't on making robots stronger or faster, but smarter. And if they can figure that out, then maybe one day people will actually want a robot dog. Spot?